Hey Sound of Peeps, how's it going? Henry here. Today we're going to go over the neonatal brain ultrasound protocol. Now I've done this video before, uh, but it was a much quicker video, just pretty much showing the views, set to music. I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth. So here we go, beginning with sagittal midline. All right, so you're going to go on the patient's anterior front to now, sagittal midline, with the, the marker, the transducer marker facing the patient's front. So here's your anterior portion, posterior, superior, inferior. You have your corpus callosum, cavum septum pellucidum, cavum virgi, third ventricle, cerebellum, fourth ventricle. All right, so let's go to the labels. So here's your corpus callosum, cavum septum pellucidum, cavum virgi, third ventricle. So with regard to the cavum septum pellucidum, cavum virgi, sometimes more inferior to the cavum virgi, you can have another cystic structure, which is called the cavum vellum interpositum. So that's all. All right, the corpus callosum is broken up into rostrum, genu, body, and splenium. I remember splenium because it's towards the back of the corpus callosum and spleen. When you're scanning the patient's left side, you're usually going to get the spleen you know, closer to the back. So splenium, back, spleen. All right, this is the fornix. Let's look at it without the label. That's the fornix there. And then they're labeled orange. I have the fornix. Let's go to the infra lateral ventricle system so the ventricles below the lateral ventricles there you got your third ventricle aqueduct aqueduct of sylvius fourth ventricle which is a triangular portion anterior to the cerebellar vermis and the cisterna magna down here is your cranial bone now the third ventricle is clear here you're not going to see it that clear on, on older babies in fact you'll probably see it when you're going coronal you'll probably just see it as a as a slit be below the the lateral ventricles all right, so here's another view. You got fornix, thalamus or thalamic adhesion or massa intermedia. So it's pretty much like the, the midline of the thalamus that connects both hemispheres of the thalamus. Then you got your midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. Again, this is posterior part of the brain, corpus callosum, and the cingulate gyrus. All right, so then from there, from sagittal, you want to go parasagittal. I usually go to the right first, so towards the patient's right. All right, and you're going to have your cauda nucleus there, your thalamus, your caudothalamic groove, which is an important part because you want to make sure there's no bleeds. That's where you're going to look. Cori plexus, again, cingulate gyrus. That's what the labels, cauda nucleus, thalamus, caudothalamic groove, cori plexus. You got a little bit of the temporal lobe there, frontal lobe, occipital lobe. All right, so you want to, you're going to want to go more parasagittal to get the lateral ventricle. Here you got a very clear lateral ventricle with anechoic cerebral spinal fluid in older babies you're not going to see that you're not going to see that that well the, the ventricles are going to be more slit like but there you got your anterior horn your body posterior horn and your temporal horn so obviously each part of the lateral ventricle is corresponding to a different part of the brain again cauda nucleus thalamus cori plexus so the cori plexus is echogenic and it does resemble blood but when you have a subependymal hemorrhage or an intraventricular hemorrhage the blood's going to be here at the caudothalamic groove not here now you can have intraventricular blood that's collecting onto the or attaching onto the cori plexus uh, in those cases you know it's a little harder to tell because some some cori plexus are bumpy so those you just have to follow up and they may have to do an mri if they want to really you know, differentiate between real choriplexus and actual hemorrhage. And usually the, the hemorrhage will collect in the dependent portion. So you'll see hemorrhage. If there is interventricular hemorrhage, you'll see it collecting like down here. All right. Next image. Okay, then all the way lateral. You can see this brain is a little different. This is an older patient. You got your sylvian fissure. You got your periventricular white matter. So the tissue around the ventricle is the periventricular white matter. And your temporal lobe. That's a good spot to look for PVLs or periventricular leukomalacia. So once you're done with that, you've sweeped all the way through. You're pretty much going to take an, an, a sagittal midline image and then two parasagittal images. You're going to repeat that on the left side. So back, go to back to midline, then left parasagittal with the, the caudothalamic groove, then left parasagittal with the, with the ventricle, and then all the way showing the periventricular white matter. So it's like about three, three to four images on each side. You know, that's the protocol. Once you do the coronals, after that, you can go to town and take more images. You know, there's also the transtemporal views, the transmastoidal views, the occipital views. Those are all extra. 
but these are the the main basic views to begin. So now let's go to coronal. All right, so beginning in coronal, you're gonna you're gonna turn counterclockwise. The indicator is gonna be on the patient's right side. So on the screen, the patient's right is gonna be on the left side of the screen. So your coronal, and then angle all the way to the frontal lobe of the brain. So that's the cranial bones there. You got the anterior or frontal lobes. You can see the the slightly hyperechoic periventricular white matter, interhemispheric fissure, which is also known as a Fox cerebri, which is an invagination of the dura matter into the midline, separating the hemispheres of the brain. All right, so white matter again, frontal lobes, and cranium. That's your first image. Then you want to angle a little further back, all right, and get the corpus callosum with interhem interhemispheric fissure. Again, so interhemispheric fissure, corpus callosum, cavum septum pellucidum, lateral ventricles, sylvian fissures on each side, and then down here are the temporal lobes. Right, here's a clear image in a in a younger baby. You can see the thalamic portions here, sylvian fissures, right? The both lateral ventricles, a clear corpus callosum. That's good view to, to show. Make sure the patient doesn't have a genesis of the corpus callosum. Okay, so now you're angling towards further back. Now you're pretty much kind of like at the midline, but still in front of the of the midbrain and brainstem of the baby. You got a very clear view of the lateral ventricles. This is the slick -like, slit like portion of the third ventricle that I told you about. So in transverse, it's gonna look in sagittal, it's gonna look more sagittal. So in sagittal, it's gonna look more triangle. In coronal, it's gonna look linear or, or slit like. So here you got your lateral ventricles, bilateral foramen of Monroe, which is a little foramen where the cerebral spinal fluid goes from the lateral ventricles into the into the third ventricle. All right, this here is not to be mistaken for blood. That's just that's just a more quarry plexus in the roof of the third ventricle. All right, so lateral ventricle on the right. That's the right lateral ventricle on the left. Cauda nucleus, thalamus, cauda nucleus, thalamus, bilateral foramen of Monroe, and then the third, then the third ventricle. So again, the corpus callosum and the interhemispheric fissure. Here you got more of the sylvian fissures. All right, so now you're angling towards the cerebellum. A lot of people call this the Christmas tree view. Whatever, it's just the tentorium, cerebelli. So you got your cerebellum and the tentorium, which is the which is another invagination of the, the dura matter, separating the hemispheres of the brain from the cerebellum. So those are both, both your lobes of the cerebellum there. Your cerebellar vermis is gonna be midline. All right, so again, lateral ventricles, lateral ventricles. These are chori plexus. Let's go to the labels. Chori plexus inside the lateral ventricles. Sylvian fissures. They're like, they're like sideways Y-shaped um, structures on either side, which are gonna separate the temporal lobes from the the parietal lobes and frontal lobes, All right? Your corpus callosum, again, your cerebellum, a little small cisterna magna. Here you can see the tentorium. It's called tentorium because it's like a tent. So that's an easy way to remember. All right, then further back, you can see a suture right here. Does your bilateral chori plexus right there. Interhemispheric fissure. All right. A broad part of the corpus callosum towards the back, and then the corpus plexus. You see in this patient, the lateral ventricles are not that prominent because this patient is a little older. You can still see a little bit of anechoic cerebral spinal fluid, and then finally, all the way posterior to the to the occipital lobes, you have your interhemispheric fissure right there. You got your periventricular white matter on both sides. So here's your parietal lobes here, periventricular white matter on either side, and your occipital lobe on the bottom. All right, so here's the posterior fontanelle. The first images were all from the anterior fontanelle in sagittal and coronal. The posterior, the posterior fontanelle, you can get sagittal images of the right and left um, lateral ventricles to show the chori plexus and to see if there's any blood accumulating like in the occipital horn. That's the view you'll get. So here you got your occipital horn. You got your chori plexus. And if there was blood, you'd see it there. So you see that's your view right there. This part here is here. All right. Here you can see in a bigger baby, the occipital horn is not going to be as obvious. The younger the baby is, the more obvious it's going to be. So a lateral ventricle, the temporal horn, and the chori plexus. All right, so temporal window is right here. So right here, anywhere anterior to the ear. And then in babies, you're not going to have a hard time scanning through there at all because 
All right, so you get your transverse brain view there. And you see your lateral ventricles here. Satum pellucidum, third ventricle there. A little bit of the cerebellum. If there's any large hemorrhage and midline shift, you'd see it there. All right, and then... All right, so lastly, there's a mastoid fontanel. So posterior to the ear, right here in the mastoid. So posterior to the ear, right here in the mastoid, you'll be able to get this view. And that's pretty much for the cerebellum. In bigger babies, you'll be see, able to see more of the, of the, of the brain here. You see where the cer circle of Willis is, uh, midbrain, you got your cerebellum, third ventricle, where you see the third ventricle, I mean, fourth ventricle. You can see the fourth ventricle here with the cerebellum and the vermis. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole protocol. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, leave any comments in the comment section, and uh, hit the notification bell so you can get notifications of my future uploads. All right, take care. Peace.